What does it mean for a bead to wet out? We usually use that phrase to, to describe a bead that flows out to the toes and where there's complete fusion at the toes uninterrupted. Let's take a look at a bead on aluminum on a lap joint that did not wet out like we want it to, and we'll talk about that, and we'll fix it. These are a couple of pieces of eighth inch thick rolled aluminum, and you can see right here there's no real cleaning action running outside the toe of the weld, and that toe of that weld on the top is just not really flowing in there like it should. The metal was cleaned very thoroughly, but I think we'll all agree that is not what we're looking for. That area on the top of the bead acts like it didn't fuse in, and there's no real evidence of cleaning action. You could, you could see while I was welding that bead that it wasn't really super clean. There was no evidence of cleaning action, no frosty looking area beyond the toes of the weld. It was like just enough. It was right at the toe of the weld. You could see some little areas where it just looked like it didn't bite. It looked like there was, it looked like a solder joint where you ran out of flux and the solder ran up to that area and it wouldn't flow any further. I decided to bump the argon flow rate up 5 CFH and run another bead. You wouldn't think necessarily 5 CFH would make that much difference, but in this case, well, let's take a look. All right, going hot. I'm using a clear number seven cup here, and normally about 20 CFH would be plenty, but by bumping it up 5 CFH, now I've got cleaning action. If you look at the top toe of that weld, you can see some frosty looking cleaning action up there. The puddle is a lot cleaner. It's wetting in a lot nicer or wetting out a lot nicer or both. Big difference. The problem is the cleaning action only wants to go where there's argon. So if you don't have a big enough argon envelope, you're not going to have adequate cleaning outside the toes of the weld to keep those oxides from creeping in and prevent that wetting, wetting out of the bead. So how do you know what's the right argon flow rate for your cup? Well, I've got a video in the works on that. Tuning flow rate of argon for whatever size cup you're using. Now, that brings up a whole lot of discussion on what's the best cup for aluminum. And some people love love a number five standard. Other people use a big eight gas lens with a 532 pure or zirconiated. It just depends what you're doing. Depends on what kind of machine you got. Depends on what kind of power you got to run your machine. Depends on a lot of things, but I like to talk about it. Let's keep the conversation going. Hey, real quick before you go, I'm going to show you this new kit we just put together. It includes the new Furic number no. 7 clear cup, as well as a ceramic number no. 7 when you don't need a clear cup, a wedge collet, and a split collet. This particular kit is for a 17 style air cooled torch. We also have them for 920 style torches.